What's the smallest amount of power you've seen go to someone's head? Public school bus driver for a poor farming area, middle school aged. We weren't allowed to talk, even at a murmur. Turn our heads, read, or do homework. The ride was an hour each way. Any infractions, he would pull over and scream at us, and usually give any kids involved and whoever was next to them a multiple-day bus ban. Rural, poor area from the school meant a lot of kids just couldn't go to school those days. Our bus was always late because he pulled over four to five times a day. He would make personal stops to his home because F you, that's why. Twenty years later, and still a hard contender for biggest loser I've ever met. I'm just picturing this one loser bus driver like you know impacting the entire education of this rural area i mean usually i feel bad for bus drivers or just about anyone that has to deal with the public in some capacity and uh no not 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 this time this guy just sounds like he really 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 sucks I worked at Blockbuster. One of the employees, Melanie, got a keyholder promotion over me. We didn't really like each other, but it wasn't a blood feud. One day, the manager calls me to sub in for someone who called out sick. It's my day off. I'm at college and don't have my uniform. I tell the manager this and she says I need a body here to work the register. Come in naked. Just get here ASAP. I show up in normal clothes and I've been working with another keyholder for about six hours. Melanie comes in to rent something because it's her day off and flips the F out. She goes back to the office and proceeds to write me up for failing to comply to dress code and so on. She then proceeds to try and make me sign it then and there, all while off the clock. She's still hourly. She does this for the next two hours until the store closes. No dice. I tell her to sit and spin on it. Manager comes in the next morning to a crap storm. Melanie gets written up for working off the clock, tells her I acted on a direct order from her, and she needs to get off her frickin' high horse. All right, so I was a PA, production assistant, the lowest of the low on a film set, for a Kelsey Grammer submarine comedy called Down Periscope. One guy was giving the meaningless title of Key PA and decided he was going to help wrangle background extras for this big exterior shot we're working on. Now, everyone, including the extras, knew that the camera was probably framed in a medium close-up on the principal actors who were doing a scene way down at the end of the dock. Nonetheless, Key PA guy took it upon himself to start blocking out whole entire scenes of these background extras. I'm talking crowds of people. You guys over there, your families of the sailors who haven't seen your husbands in six months and you run from the bus to the fence, but you guys are cadets who get in the way and you guys are arguing about which car has the right of way. Then all you kids start clapping because you see a big doggy pulling his owner so fast he trips over the leash. Like a second unit on a Michael frickin' Bay movie. He had these people doing this made up little scene over and over and over he'd yell at them tell them they did it wrong and reset them back to one to start over madness i walked by the guy and noticed this was going on and said you know the camera is pointed the other direction right he just laughed and said ha, 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 I, I know software developer here we had a guy appointed as the change manager in charge of enforcing controls and coding standards he was not a programmer he would regularly reject changes because he didn't like how variables were named like he would want cust count renamed to cstmr cnt sounds kind of petty and like he felt like he had to do something so he was just like uh, no i don't like that change it when i played halo 2 i joined a fairly large clan that had some pretty cool people in it we did a lot to Together, and every once in a while they would elect a new forum moderator slash officer to run the ranks. One day they elect this kid who sounded like he was 11 to be a new officer. He seemed pretty down to earth, but the very next day he gets home from school and starts kicking every single person from the clan who just even slightly brushed him the wrong way. It was so bad that the leader who was on vacation in Hawaii had to log on a library computer in order to strip all powers from this kid. The kid's reasoning was that he didn't get picked for a baseball game at school and was angry the rest of the day. Which is why you don't give children power because they have no idea how to communicate their feelings or separate their emotions from one situation to their emotions in another situation. Years ago, while working in a pizza place, our manager had to leave on a family emergency and left a girl in charge until one of the other shift runners could get there. He lived about 45 minutes away, and in that 45 minutes, this girl who was left in charge actually called one of her friends and hired her, saying she was the manager now, wrote me up for putting too much cheese on a pizza, and actually told one of the drivers he was fired because she didn't like his attitude. When the shift runner got there to take over, this girl also told him not to worry about it, and 
and she had things under control. End result, her friend was not hired, my write-up for using too much cheese was torn up, the fired driver who never left the parking lot kept his job, and she quit a few days later because we were unprofessional and the manager played favorites. I lived in a village for a few months, and one of the richer farmer's wives got the job of running the community center. She put out a big placard with a picture of herself and titled herself CEO, as well as on business cards. Started wearing business suits and banning people she didn't like the look of. The building was the size of a small apartment and hosted a knitting and Bible club for senior citizens. Used to work with a group of interns in an office, and for some reason I still don't understand, they decided to promote one of us over the others. Their job was basically just to schedule who was doing what and when. That's it. Only took two weeks before we found out she was keeping detailed notes on all of our mistakes and taking them to upper management. They promptly told her to calm the F down and decided to do away with the position. She made a lot of enemies that day. She had ambitions of working at the company and was trying to make us all look bad. I think that one may have backfired on her. My favorite power trip was from one of my students. I had placed my kids in groups for a big project and gave them the option to elect their leader for each group. I intentionally placed all the quiet kids together thinking nobody would overpower their ideas. I was so wrong. Vincent was elected leader because none of the other quiet kids wanted the responsibility, and he immediately became a despot, controlling whether they were allowed to ask me questions, giving assignments and dictating the exact outcome, loudly berating his teammates if a drawn picture was even millimeters off center. I want you to understand that before this, Vincent would hardly raise his voice when I made him answer questions for the class. After a day of guiding him toward better leadership strategies, I came in like the goddamn U.S. Marine and deposed him, but better than the U.S. because I facilitated the next election. The students decided no joint power between two entities, so no single person would let the power go to their head. It would have been a great teachable moment for checks and balances, but we were studying anthropology, so I let it go and always looked sideways at Vincent after that. There's always some shy, weak person that's waiting for an opportunity to grab a power and then abuse it. I mean, this is literally why I've always said don't trust people that do their utmost best to appear absolutely harmless. A girl I worked with was promoted to assistant manager at a Little Caesars because she was the only one there that was 18. She went from an okay worker to not doing anything and making my time there a living hell. I eventually quit and was asked to come back after she was fired. Five years later, I got a random Facebook message from her apologizing for being such a douche during that time. I once worked part-time doing inventory. We would go to stores like like the Bay, Whole Foods, and literally count everything on the shelves with our fancy, dancy machines. This one man was given leadership of the home section. Now, he wasn't actually given any management power, made the same amount as everyone else, all that. Just literally, he was told, okay, you and these people are going to the home section, divvy it up however. He went full power trip mode, micromanaging how I counted towels, patrolling the aisles, watching us all, yelling unnecessarily. From that day on, he was known as King Tut. That reminds me when I worked with this guy called Ivan. I think he was from Bermuda or something like that. He was okay, but he was like weirdly demanding and insistent that his way be the way that everyone worked. And uh, yeah, I called him Ivan the Terrible. The upperclassmen at my university would proctor exams the freshmen would take. I wasn't there for this, but my friend tells me the story of how he and Lewis were the two proctors while the professor was in the office down the hall. Apparently, in an effort to prevent cheating, Lewis brought a clipboard and noted when and where each student went to the bathroom. Where, meaning that he would force students to use different bathrooms. The justification being that I suppose they could leave secret notes or something? So once the bathroom on the first, second, and eighth floor each had one person go there, he made a kid use a bathroom in the building next to ours. Kid complains to the other proctor who grabs the professor who kicks Lewis from the job. Lewis, I know you use Reddit and I know you might see this and I'm sure you'll figure out who I am. You're a freaking C-word. You know, I don't know about this one. I think Lewis is being kind of smart to be honest. I mean, still unreasonable, but still smart. Probably to my own head, when I was about eight years old, I was asked by the teacher, because I was being a well-behaved little boy, to stand by the whiteboard while she was talking about something and write the names of people who were talking and acting out on the board. I went mad with power and wrote people's names down who just looked at me funny. In elementary school, I was on the safety patrol, which basically meant that I stood at the busy intersection alongside an adult crossing guard, and when he went into the street to stop traffic, I would let the little kids know it was safe to cross. I also told other kids not to run, etc. 
Well, one day, a girl, a grade below me, walked up the hill from elementary school to the intersection instead of taking the stairs. So I grabbed her by the arm and marched her back to the stairs and told her she had to take the stairs. Proto-fascist right here. I got in trouble for it. Girl I was waitressing with just us two was going to be a manager, but wasn't a manager yet. She flipped out because I had a contraction and sat down a minute, screamed in front of patrons that she was my supervisor, she was better than me, and if I didn't like it, I could effin' leave. I clocked out and quit on the spot. The captain, aka coach's kid on my fourth grade hockey team, ran into him in high school and we were trying to figure out where we knew each other from. I eventually said, oh, you were on my hockey team in fourth grade. His response years later, your hockey team? Wow, that's funny. It was my hockey team. Honestly, I just think that's a hilarious response. My friend is the co-maid of honor in her sister's destination wedding. Her sister and her sister's fiance are great friends of mine and my friend and her husband are even closer and she thinks she can control people's plans and arrangements. For example, I booked the resort through Amex instead of the room block and months after booking she is still fighting me about it. The bride and groom don't give a frick and have told me they would have done the same thing. My youngest sister got an Xbox 360 some years ago on Christmas. Whenever my youngest sister or I would ask to play, she would boss us around first, but ultimately deny us. Get me some juice first, bring me some snacks, make my bed. Me and my younger sister were just like, can we play now? No, you shouldn't have trusted me. Female dog. I had an older brother, I know that feeling, the whole like, you know, you do the things that they ask you and then they literally turn around and go, you shouldn't have trusted me. I'm pretty sure, yeah, they literally did that to me once and I was seething. I have a big group of friends who go to the local park on a regular basis and play outdoor games and board games. I bought a set of lawn darts as well as numerous other games. We were deliberately in a part of the park where no other people were around for at least 100 meters. The patrol drove up in a little cart. This fussy man got out, hooked his thumbs into his belt loops and shambles over to me like a West cartoon character. The only thing he was missing was hay in his teeth and a hat to tip back. He tried to confiscate my lawn darts as they posed a danger to the public. I pointed out there was no public around outside of our group. Then he went with the line that the little lady was using them incorrectly and posing a danger to myself. I was 38 at the time and I am 5'10". I towered over his little diminutive self and lady is not the first word I would use to describe myself. I asked him on whose authority he was confiscating my games and to show me the bylaw that allowed this. I even pulled out my phone to look up the park rules. He started to get flustered and by this point my friends were openly laughing at his routine. He backed off and drove away. Later that day when one of us made a complaint at the office we learned he was actually the park maintenance man, garbage collector, and had zero authority. He wasn't even supposed to be driving that particular vehicle. Was the garbage collector douchey? Yes. But do you also sound like a douche? In my humble opinion, yes, but only when they start ragging on the person's side and stuff. They can't help that. My boss recently found out that he's related to Michelle Obama. He bragged about it all day. Self-roast. When I was in second grade, we played a class maths game that included some quick mental thinking. There was a prize, the big digit timer. That was literally a timer or clock my teacher had probably gone from the supermarket. It took most of the year for someone to finally win it. That person being me. Cut to a week later and when someone insulted me, my go-to response of, yeah, well, I won the big digit timer and you didn't. Literally a frickin' timer. <laughs> <laughs> That's just another one that I find really funny. My boyfriend has his name on the title of the house next to his father's. My boyfriend and I live in a house that his dad bought for him so he could avoid dorm living. His sisters were living with us while they attended school with him, and they still drop by whenever they need to, and they're allowed to just walk in whenever. His dad shows up whenever he wants and needs to as well. Yet my boyfriend will get on the mic on his games, and when his friends start talking mad crap, he just goes, Well, at least I own my own house. Yeah, but I have my own house. I'm going to college and I own a house. We can't afford to pay rent. His dad is paying for us to live here and buying our groceries. His dad also takes care of 100% of all the problems that happen with the house and whatnot. His dad technically owns the car my boyfriend drives. He has not paid for anything. Hell, I've paid more in rent and other expenses in total than he has. My daughter in fifth grade when they gave her a safety patrol badge. Oh my god, it was awful. We called her Paul Blart behind her back. She wasn't as incompetent as he was, but to say that she was taking her job seriously was an understatement. That just sounds cute. So, I'm not proud of this. That needs to be said. In high school, my boyfriend slid into home base. Literally. This is not an innuendo. And sacrificed his ankle for a home run. 
I drove him to the emergency room, and when his mom arrived, I volunteered to go get food to escape her and feed his teammates. While waiting for my pizza at a nearby joint, the kind with games and crap for kids, I decided it would be so cool if I brought toppings with me. I was known as a bit of a rule follower, so I thought snagging the glass pepper and cheese shakers would make me look cool. I don't know, it was freaking stupid. So I casually put them in my purse and internally applaud myself for being such a rebel. Then it happens. Miss, are you stealing those? I turn around to see a kid who was probably my age but seemed much more authoritative in that moment, looking rather indignant. He pointedly grabs my purse and gazes at the contraband, then looks at me with true disdain. I mean, you'd think there were dead kittens in that bag. He then proceeds to lecture me about theft. I was scared at first, my first criminal act was not going well, but then he starts talking about these condiments like they are housed in his great Nana's priceless glass cheese and pepper shakers. He starts threatening legal action, and now I'm mortified. I break a rule and my first ever police report will say, stole cheese. After several minutes of the sternest talking to ever be given by a mother frickin' busboy, the manager comes strolling by. The kid stops him to tell him what I've done. He is glowing with self-righteousness, like this act is one that will finally show his worth. They may let him run the ticket counter, or dare I say, work the actual register due to his courageous act of stopping yet another thief from taking red pepper flakes. Well, he was wrong. The manager looks at him, and with all the passion that can be mustered by a middle-aged man managing a pizza chain with skee-ball machines, he shrugs and says, Okay, did you get them back? Busboy proudly holds the sacred objects for his manager to see, nods the affirmative, and waits for his praise. The praise does not come. His manager simply shrugs again and mumbles, Okay. Busboy is bruised, but not broken. He then enthusiastically suggests to the manager that the authorities be called and charges be filled so that I may be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. This woke his manager up a bit. His eyes widened and he looks at the busboy and asks, Are you insane? You got the shakers back. We are done here. It was a hit for sure. Busboy is shocked. This is simply not how he saw this playing out. He thought this was his ticket out of cleaning puke out of the ball pit, but no. As he suffered through what I'm sure were flashbacks of the weekend of eight-year-old birthday party soda experiments and the mess those make, I realized that I was never in danger. This busboy was riding so high on the perceived power bestowed upon him by his pizza overlords, I had been scared. But he had no power here. As he regained composure and tried to save face by letting me off with a stern warning, I just laughed. I took my pizza and no condiments and I left. I'm pleased that I do not have a police record, even more so that I don't have one that mentions Parmesan cheese, all because of the power crazed busboy in history. Some people gotta really stop and think, am I being a total jobs worth about this? Like, yeah, they were right to grab them and be like, no, don't steal the shakers, but then they just took it to a whole nother level that it did need to be taken to whatsoever like yeah don't let people steal from you full stop it it sets a bad example and you know people think you're weak man was trying to go above and beyond and just ended up looking like a fool i bus for a month at a restaurant before being promoted but during that time one of the managers would use the bus boys as her personal assistants she would have us do the small jobs she had to do while busing she also asked us the same way every time could you pretty please get me ice could you pretty please carry the boxes for me could you pretty please go get my food for me. She was older and had no husband, but desperately wanted a rich guy, and she also had a wild booger sugar addiction. I work at a big factory as the lowest level of manager, fifth level. Sometimes I work in projects with a guy in second level management. He steps up to location manager, first level. Whenever our location manager is away, one day while working on a project, our location manager was away, and the guy I worked with had to leave in a minor emergency, water leak at home. He made me sign a document really quick, gave me a phone, and left. After reading the document, I quickly realized I was acting location manager. I went down a level to third level management to visit my boss's boss and told him he was doing a good job and to keep it up. Priceless look on faces ensued. I don't know why, but I really thought that this was going to go in the direction of, so as acting location manager, I then handed off the position to the next guy beneath me and effed off to do something that I wanted to do, like visit someone or do something or go somewhere. I just today watched an 18-year-old kid get four certified while loading
loading up trucks, he got the nerve to start barking orders at a senior staff, including myself, and hastily was revoked of his license. He didn't say a word as he left work today. My five-year-old won the kindergarten Olympics. He was a complete butthead for about a week. When I worked at McDonald's, a teenager was made temporary assistant manager for a little under an hour and threatened to send three people home. That guy got his hours cut real quick. Twitch mods. It's hilarious. They can be given mod for no reason and they are so stupid they actually think they are like a law enforcer. Young teens being given the power to ban people at will and you can actually feel the inflation and narcissism. It's hilarious. Forklift certified? Well, that's your problem right there, don't you know? Getting forklift certification can corrupt you even faster than the one ring to rule them all. It takes a very special person to wield that kind of power. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description below.